In this video, I'm gonna show you eight of the best work from home jobs available right now that will allow you to earn money from anywhere in the world and don't require you to have lots of previous experience or qualifications. And I'm also gonna show you how and where you can apply for all of these jobs and give you a few tips on getting started in each one. All you need is a basic computer and an internet connection. Work from home jobs or remote jobs as they're also known are a great way to earn extra income on the side of a full-time job or they can even be used as a stepping stone into becoming a full-time remote worker and ditching the nine to five altogether. They're also really good for people with full-time commitments such as parents and carers who want to earn a bit of extra income and need the flexibility to work around their other commitments. So whatever your goals are, my aim with this video is really just to show you a number of work from home job options that are available right now to give you some practical advice and resources to help you get one of those jobs so that you can go from where you are now to earning a regular income in a relatively short space of time. And just as a quick disclaimer, these aren't get rich quick schemes. They will require a bit of hard work up front and they won't make you a millionaire overnight, but they can help you to earn anything from a few hundred to a few thousand pounds a month, depending on the time and effort you are willing and able to put into them. Now, before I dive into this list of work from home jobs, I just wanna outline what I'm gonna cover in the video and in particular what I'm gonna cover about each job. And I've also put links in the description below the video that you can use to jump to any of these sections if you want to. Firstly, I'm gonna talk about what a good work from home job or remote job really is, and in particular, what the criteria for the list I'm about to go through will meet. And this is important because I want to make sure that I'm covering realistic jobs that anybody watching this can obtain. And I also wanna make sure that you're aiming for good opportunities and you're avoiding some of the common pitfalls that people fall into when looking for remote jobs. Then I'm gonna run through my list of jobs and cover all of the following points. What the job involves and what you'll be expected to do, what skills are involved in the job, how much you can earn, how to get started in the job, so what websites you need to approach and any other helpful resources that might help you to get these jobs. You'll notice that a lot of these websites are UK based, but you don't need to be based in the UK to apply for them, so don't let that deter you if you're based outside of the UK. And there's gonna be lots and lots of links in the description um, to link through to some of these resources that I'm gonna be mentioning, so make sure you open that up. And while you're down that way, if you wouldn't mind hitting the like button, not only does it help out the channel, but it allows you to save the video in your liked videos because there's a lot of information in this video and you'll probably need to come back to it at a later date to review. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I'm gonna throw in a couple of bonus tips around things that you need to avoid when applying for remote jobs to make sure that you're not making any big mistakes that are gonna cost you later down the line. So what is the criteria for a good work from home job that you can get started in quickly? Well, firstly, all of the jobs that I'm gonna run through here are what I call low barrier to entry jobs. And what that means is they don't require you to have previous experience or technical knowledge or qualifications. So I'm not just gonna say become a web developer because although that's a very good job in its own right, it's not something you can get started in straight away. It would take years to build up and train and develop the knowledge and skills required to become a web developer. So as long as you have a basic grasp of English and a willingness to put in a bit of hard work, then you should be able to land any of these jobs within a relatively short space of time. And that of course means that you'll be able to start generating an income quite quickly. And also this list is gonna be strictly for jobs and not businesses. So I'm not just gonna tell you to go and start your own Amazon business, because although that is again a viable way to make money remotely, it's not a job, it's a business. It will require you to risk your own money and it could potentially take months or years before you turn a profit not to mention there'll be lots of learning to do if you've never done it before. Some of these jobs may be able to be done on a freelance basis, which is almost leaning a little bit towards starting your own business, but you'll still have the security of working for a large website or agency, which takes away a lot of the hassle and makes things a lot more straightforward for you. Thirdly, all of the jobs on this list have the potential for you to progress within them, which means you can develop the skills that are required within them, which can lead to better opportunities and an increased rate of pay over time which is really beneficial if you are looking to make a full-time career or a full-time income from remote work. So this means I'm not gonna be covering things like filling out online surveys or cashback websites because there's no way to develop the skills within those, which means there's no way to increase the pay rate as time goes on. And generally speaking, those things tend to be quite low paid anyway. So let's start looking at these jobs then. The first job on this list is a virtual assistant or VA. Virtual assistants provide admin support to small business owners or sometimes to managers within larger businesses. The type of tasks you'll be doing as a VA will vary a lot depending on the type of employee you're working for and what their needs are. But generally speaking, the type of tasks you'll be doing will include things like document formatting, organizing emails and responding to emails, updating and managing spreadsheets, diary management, online research for things like articles and presentations, 
and also things like booking flights, trains and hotels for business travel. So the work can be really varied, but I would class the skills needed as general office skills. So knowing how to use Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets and Google Docs and, and those kind of programs can be really helpful. Um, and also having a good knowledge of the main email providers. So things like Outlook or Gmail. You'd also need to have a good grasp of the English language and a good ability to provide written communication and to follow briefs. A lot of these skills can be learned right here on YouTube. There are lots of tutorials on these topics. And a quick tip for those of you who struggle with written English or perhaps English isn't your first language, you can use a spelling and grammar checking tool like Grammarly, which is a Chrome extension that checks all of your documents, all of your emails, anything that you send out. Um, it highlights the mistakes and shows you corrections. It's totally free to download and I'll put a link for it in the description below. Now, the amount of money you can earn as a virtual assistant really does depend on who you're working for, the type of tasks you're doing and how long you've been doing it for. But the job sites say that the average virtual assistant earns around 11 pounds an hour, but I've also seen some permanent VA jobs going for around 25,000 pounds a year. Another point worth noting is that virtual assistants are often paid for the tasks they do and not for their time, which means if you can get really good at doing certain tasks and start doing them really quickly, you could potentially earn a lot more than the average figures. So how do you get a job as a virtual assistant? Well, probably the easiest way to get started as a VA is to sign up to a freelance website and start offering some services that you either already have some experience in or that you've recently learned here on YouTube. Signing up to a freelance website like peopleperhour.com or fiverr.com is really easy and you'll find there are lots of small business owners on there who are looking for virtual assistants to take care of some of their daily tasks. Now, using these freelance sites effectively does require a bit of time and effort and I could actually make a whole video on that if you'd like me to. So if you do want me to cover that in another video in more detail, please drop a comment below. But basically the three things you need to do are you need to make an attractive profile that shows people what you can offer them, the kind of VA services you can offer. You need to search for jobs that have been posted by business owners and apply for them by writing proposals. And you also need to create your own sort of little mini adverts um, to show people the kind of services you can offer business owners can then come and find them and apply to you directly to take you on. You can also search for permanent VA jobs on the big job websites like CV Library and Azuna. Um, they'll have a few, but you're more likely to find um, remote jobs like that on sites like Hubstaff or WeWork Remotely. And I'll put links to those websites in the description, of course. And of course, whenever you're applying for any job online, you need a good, strong CV to make that right first impression. So if you need any advice around that, then obviously I have lots of CV advice videos on the channel. And I've also got lots of templates, resources, examples on the standout CV website. Again, link will be in the description. The next work from home job on this list is a really popular one in the world of remote work, and that is writer. And this can be broken down into three categories, article writer, copywriter, and CV writer. So let's take a look at article writer first. Now, article writing involves writing relatively short articles or even blog posts for websites. Websites are in constant need of content to entertain their readers, so there's a really high demand for this type of work, and you can find work writing on just about any topic under the sun these days. Obviously, a good level of written English is needed to be an article writer, um, and also an understanding of how to structure a good article and keep readers entertained. Copywriters are very similar to article writers, but they write text specifically for advertisement type material. So for sales pages on websites or for leaflets and brochures and things like that. So it's more geared towards encouraging readers to, to buy products or sign up for services. So again, it requires a very good level of written English, but also as a copywriter, you need to be able to sort of tap into people's emotions and persuade them to take action. If you want to improve your writing skills, there are lots of information sources out there to help you do that these days online. Uh, in particular, marketing sites like HubSpot or Copyblogger are really good sources. But another really good way to learn how to write well is just to study other writers. You probably read lots of articles online, so next time you read one, um, you know, start to look at it a bit more objectively, see how the article is structured and try to learn a bit more about how the writer keeps you interested. Article and copywriter pay varies a lot, but if you're just starting out in the industry, you can probably expect to earn anywhere between three to four pounds per 100 words written, which means if you can write a 500 word article in one hour, then you'll earn an average hourly rate of around 17 pounds 50. And an average writer can probably earn around 20 to 25K in a permanent role. But as you increase your skills as a writer and perhaps start to specialize in certain areas, you can really start to increase those pay rates. So for example, if you were to work your way into becoming a specialist sales copywriter for technology companies, then you could probably earn a lot higher rate because the pages you're writing for will be generating high value sales for those businesses, which means that the employers will be prepared to pay you a much higher rate to write those pages. 
So it's really about getting stuck in and carving your own pathway if you want to earn the best rates as a writer. To get an article or copywriter job, again, I would suggest starting with the freelance websites like People Per Hour, like Fiverr.com, setting up a profile, start applying for jobs within those sites, and also setting up your own mini adverts to tell people the services that you're offering. At first, it can be quite tricky to land jobs on these freelance sites when you don't have any feedback or reviews because the buyers have no reason to trust you. To get around this problem, start offering work at really low competitive rates to get some early buyers in. And then once you've built up some good feedback, you can slowly start to increase your rates because once you start to get a few reviews saying that you've done good work, then other people will start to have more trust in you and you'll be able to charge higher prices and people will want to work with you because they can see that you've delivered good results for others. You can also sign up to work for a big copywriting agency like Copify or Textbroker. What they do is they essentially have contracts with large companies to create lots of content and then they hire remote writers to write that content for them. So you basically sign up with these agencies by their websites and you may be required to do a quick test to uh, determine the level of your writing ability. And then once you're signed up, they will simply assign you work and give you deadlines and you just have to complete those writing tasks within the deadlines given. Now, the pay does tend to be a little on the low side with these agencies, but they can give you lots of regular work and it's a really good way to get started if you don't already have some experience. And of course, you can find permanent and contract remote writing positions on the main job boards and on remote specialist job boards. And of course, the links are in the description for those ones I've mentioned previously. And the third type of writing work from home job is CV writer. And this is essentially rewriting people's CVs for them to help them get jobs or resumes if you're in the US. There is a surprising amount of demand for this service out there and there are lots of companies offering it. And it's also a topic I know quite a lot about because I used to write CVs as a freelance CV writer on People Per Hour and this eventually led to me starting my own business, StandoutCV.com. I started off writing CVs for £10 per CV on People Per Hour and gradually raised my rate to £100 per CV and then I went on to build my own website and eventually was able to build a full-time income and quit my day job. And the reason I'm telling you that is because I think there's lots of potential with any of these jobs if you're willing to stick with them and dedicate some time and effort to them. Now, you might not want to start a business particularly in the long run, but it's definitely possible to make some big changes to your income and to your lifestyle if you stick with some of these jobs, even if some of the starting pay rates don't seem that impressive. So the first thing you need to do to become a CV writer is obviously learn how to write a CV. And luckily for you, I have one of the biggest resources on the internet for that. So if you head over to standoutcv.com, links will be in the description, of course. Um, I've got lots of guides on there, lots of example CVs, templates, etc. that you can have a look at. um, And you can hopefully learn a good basic understanding of how to write a CV from that. And then once you've done that, you can perhaps offer to write some CVs for friends or family just to get a bit of practice before you start looking for paid work. So there are a couple of ways you can get started working as a CV writer. The first is to sign up with one of the big US or UK CV writing companies like Top CV, Top Resume, Purple CV, City CV. There are lots out there. If you run a quick Google search for CV writing companies, you'll be able to find plenty. You'll sign up with them and they'll usually have some kind of an entrance test. So you'll have to provide your own CV and perhaps some example CVs of other CVs that you've done. And then once you've signed up with them, they will then assign you jobs. And generally speaking, they will pay anywhere between 10 and 40 pounds per CV, depending on the types of customers they deal with. Some of them will want you to interact with the customers directly and run through a consultation process to get the information from them before writing their CV, whereas other companies will handle all of the customer interaction and then provide you with a brief and you will then just have to return the CV to the company within a certain deadline. Unfortunately, I'm not hiring at Standout CV at the moment, but if I ever am, I will of course announce it here on YouTube. You can also provide CV writing services on some of the freelance sites I've mentioned earlier, like People Per Hour, like Fiverr.com. Again, it's as simple as setting up a profile, advertising what you offer, and then I would again go with the tactic of starting with low competitive prices to get some early buyers in, and then gradually raising your rates as you start to improve your profile by getting more and more feedback from happy customers. And of course, you might also be able to find some remote CV writing jobs on the major job websites and also the remote job sites as well. The next job on this list is remote English teacher. In countries like China and Russia, there is big demand for English tutoring because a lot of parents out there want their children to speak English. So to fill this demand, a big number of companies have popped up offering English tutoring to people in these countries. The job involves running online teaching sessions with students and helping them to improve their English fluency via interactions and tests. And the work schedule can be arranged flexibly to work around yourself and the students. The requirements to do this job will require from company to company, but of course you will need a 
good command of the English language. Some companies will also require you to have a degree, but certainly not all of them. Some companies want you to have a TEFL certificate, which stands for Teaching English as a Foreign Language. Now, this could cost you anything from £100 to a few hundred pounds and will take you about a week or so to complete online, uh, depending on how you want to take the course. But again, not all of them ask for this certificate. And you don't need to necessarily speak the customer language, but of course that would be beneficial. The pay for this job will again depend on who you're working for, but on average, online English teachers earn anywhere between 11 to 19 pounds an hour. To land one of these jobs, you just need to apply directly to one of these online English tutoring companies. I will of course put links in the description and just make sure that you're ticking all of the requirements that they're asking for before you apply. The next job on this list is data entry. Now, data entry jobs are really straightforward. You're simply helping companies to process and store their data by taking it from one source and entering it into another. So as an example of how this might work, a company might have lots of old customer records stored on paper somewhere, and they need to move with the times and get all of those records onto digital format. They might then go and hire a data entry clerk to read all of those paper records and then move them onto an online database or onto something even simpler like an Excel spreadsheet. To get started in data entry, you just need to be able to read information accurately and type at a fairly quick rate. On average, data entry work for UK firms pays around £8 an hour, but if you can start to move on to slightly more complex data work like data cleansing and data analysis, you can start to push that towards £10-£15 an hour, maybe even more depending on the kind of work that you're doing. Microsoft Excel is a really powerful and popular tool for managing and processing data and you can learn lots of clever things to do with it right here on YouTube. And if you can become a whiz at Excel, you'll certainly make yourself more valuable to employers in data roles especially, but also lots of other jobs, remote or otherwise. The best way to get started in data entry is to pick up small jobs on freelance websites and then start to build relationships with the people that you work for and start to get some ongoing work with them. You can also find data entry jobs on the main job boards and the remote job boards, but they don't seem to come up as often, so it might be a good idea to set up some job alerts so that you get notified as soon as data entry jobs come out. The next job on the list is proofreading and editing. So I spoke earlier about writing jobs and I said that there are a lot of businesses out there with websites who need lots of written content for their sites. Well, those businesses also need people to check that that writing is correct and there are no spelling or grammar mistakes. And in order to do this, they hire proofreaders and editors to check the work and make sure it's perfect before it gets published. Proofreading and editing obviously requires a very good knowledge of the English language and good attention to detail. A lot of companies like their proofreaders and editors to come from writing backgrounds. So you could potentially start off doing some writing work and then gradually work your way up, build your experience and then look to move over into a proofreading role or an editing role in the long run. On average, proofreaders tend to earn around £20 an hour, but that can be raised quite a lot if you are, for example, working in a very high paying industry or dealing with complex subject matter such as scientific research or legal documentation. To find proofreading jobs, it's best to look in the same places that I mentioned for the writing jobs because anybody who hires lots of writers is probably also going to hire proofreaders and editors too. So have a look at some of the big agencies is probably your best bet uh, and also on the remote sites and freelance sites too. The next job on this list is online customer service. Now, as you know, customer service is a big part of most businesses and traditionally customer service agents will be based in offices or in call centers or directly in shop fronts. And they will do things like dealing with inquiries, handling complaints, answering questions, etc. But these days, a lot of businesses have a purely online presence or they simply want to save costs on offices and shops and things like that. So this means that they're hiring remote customer service staff, which is creating a lot more remote job opportunities. So these jobs will involve all of your standard customer service duties. So you might be answering questions over live chat or email, or you might be providing technical assistance about certain products over the phone. You don't necessarily need previous customer service experience to do one of these jobs, but just having good communication skills and a good way of dealing with people will give you a head start in most cases. These jobs tend to pay between eight to 10 pounds an hour, and you can find them all over the web on the main job websites, on the remote job boards. And another really good way to find these jobs is looking for big global companies that you know of and looking through their careers pages and searching for remote customer service jobs. So that brings me to the end of the jobs list. But before I wrap up this video, I just wanna share with you a couple of things that you should really avoid when looking for remote or work from home jobs. Number one is get rich quick schemes. Now, if you're doing your own research when you're looking for work from home jobs and you're going beyond the sites I've showed you, which is absolutely a good idea because I'm sure there are plenty more out there, then you may find that you come across some dubious offers from shady looking sites saying things like, become a millionaire overnight by trading Bitcoin or earn thousands of dollars a day without any prior experience. And I have to tell you as a general rule of thumb, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. 
And if you sign up for something like that, it will usually be some kind of scam where you're asked to pay a lot of money for a piece of software or a course that will apparently help you to generate lots of money in a short space of time. But the reality is it probably won't work and it will actually leave you in a much worse financial situation than you were before you started. And that brings me on to the second thing that you should avoid when you're looking for work from home jobs, and that is paying money to the employer. If you're applying for a job and the company is asking you to pay them for the privilege of working for them, then that is a huge red flag. It either just means that the company are very unprofessional, aren't doing very well financially, or at worst, they might even be trying to profit from job applicants. So if a company asks you to pay them even one penny, I would walk away instantly. Now, there may, of course, be instances where you're required to have a qualification or some kind of background check that needs to be paid for. But really, that should be paid to the external body that run those things and not to the employer that you'll be working for. So that brings me to the end of the video. I really hope you found it helpful. If you have done, I'd love if you could leave a comment below, especially if you've tried one of these jobs and found some success with it. Um, it would be great for myself and also for other viewers to hear how you've done it. And also don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more advice on finding good jobs and maximizing your income. So thanks for watching and best of luck with finding a work from home job.